4G Studio, it's Attack of the Show. Hey everybody, hi! Hey. Welcome to Attack of the Show, I'm Kevin Perez, good to see you. I'm Allison Hayslip. Yes, she is. I am, not On the lying. show today, she survived a 3D piranha attack, but can she survive our show? Whoa. Sexy British actress, it's very important to note that she is sexy and British. Yeah. Kelly Brooke drops by the studio to talk about man-eating fish and her first spring break experience, which involves stripper poles. Have you heard that last part? Stripper poles. Stripper poles! Then Chris Hardwick reviews Sony's 52-inch 3D HD TV on Gadgetron. It's, it's killer app. It actually converts 2D to three dimensions. What? And we'll show you how well it works and tell you if you should buy it. Then Morgan Webb joins Kevin to talk about the trippy, addictive new game Limbo from Playdead Studios. It's an eerie, puzzle-solving platformer that looks absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. And in a very awkward AOTS classic, we'll replay a buzzworthy clip of Olivia embarrassing herself while imitating online songstress Tina C back in 2007. Now, if you think this video is bizarre, just, just wait until you see Olivia's reaction. Yeah. Mm, priceless. The World Wide Web is like a sewer where people toss stupid videos. Yeah. But like a good plumber, we sort of dredged the clogged pipe that is the internet and came up with some choice nuggets. Allison, you've known me for what? I have. Uh, you've known me for 18, 19 years or so? We'll, and you we'll know, go with that. You know that I, I keep a list of things that I think are not fun. That is uh, true. He top does, of that actually. List, mowing lawns. That's true. Uh, Kevin, there is one way to make it less awful, and that is with a riding mower. <laughs> Two ways to make it less awful. Riding mower. And dog. Yeah, I, I, you know, at first I was gonna say Arizona should have thought things through before they got rid of all their gardeners, but, oh. Oh. but that is an adorable solution. <laughs> Today's number two item is, uh, well, it's a, it's a dumb idea, lovingly captured on video and shared for all the world to see. Yes, uh, most people know that you shouldn't put fire up your nose. I think that's a, <laughs> that's a given. Uh, just in case you were thinking about it, I do a lot of videos. You know, I, you've seen all of them. Uh, they're funny. But I think that I should just start doing some hardcore stuff. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick the lighter up my nose there. What up? If you're like me, you spend a lot of time wondering about the evolutionary moment when domesticated dogs separated from wolves. Uh, it keeps me up at night. It's fascinating <laughs> stuff, really. I actually do find it interesting. Oh. But, but I know that the rest of you probably don't, and you might just prefer to enjoy this latest production from Little Nice Wolf, it's, who's a savant of the YouTube music video world. It's a simplistic <laughs> I don't know about that. synth. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'm talking right yeah, now. Yeah, no, I'm, my bad. What is it, Morgan? I'm sorry. It's a simplistic synth ballad that answers the question will dogs and wolves ever get along? Of course. <laughs> the musical <laughs> bond between dog and wolf, or wolf and pig, I'm not exactly sure. Wait, is this, ah, uh, this isn't some sort of weird internet furry thing, is it? <sighs> you know what? Probably is, actually. Damn it, internet! I always fall for you. <laughs> Weddings. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Well, I was just, it was just a word, Vin. Relax. I mean, yeah, some guys have been suckered into them. They're part oh. tedious social like obligation. They're part excuse to get rip roaring drunk. You know, and that's, that's really about it. That's really what they are for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, th and that's all well and good, but when the wedding videographer comes around to the tables at the reception, Please try to keep it together. Uh, unless, of course, you'd like to be our number one around the net item. Right? <laughs> you need two things. You need to understand each other because you're two separate individuals coming together into a one relationship and making it work. It's really hard to do, but with love and understanding, you should be always able to do it. No, 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 oh, oh. Oh. We get, we get so when it, You want to do the very unsexy police dance or are we moving on from that? No, I'm, I'm beyond okay, the police good, dance. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> listen, from time to time, this show has been known to salute men who find new places to stick their penises. Um, something we cherish, but not today. Mm. Don't try what you're about to see, please. Send your junk out of the room. Here's Schmeckleshock. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> um, just in case you didn't really understand what was going on there, that was, um, that was a penis wrapped in foil and then inserted into an electrical outlet. That's, um, wait, 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 the important part. By choice. Yeah, so let's, um, now that you know what you know, let's see it again. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, still surprised they let us show that. <laughs> really? Yeah, I really am. Cause, and that just, that looks painful, to say the least. Well, yeah, I mean, no one should do that, ever. Well, ever. I mean, yeah, and it's like, whoa, 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 Excuse me, what year is it? It's 2010, uh, and who are you? Excuse me, where oh. are my manners? <laughs> Nikola Tesla at your service. No, no, no. no. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. What are you doing here? Well, I was experimenting with electricity in Colorado Springs, and as it turns out, when you sheath your member oh, in right. metal and electrocute it, okay. the yeah. result is time travel! No. I don't, no, I, no, I'm I, sorry. I, I appreciate the enthusiasm, but I don't believe it. You right. Know I mean? Well, I just appeared before your very eyes with a sheath member of yeah, metal. You did, you did. Oh, whoa, whoa, another one? Oh, oh. Confound it, it's Edison! Oh. Travel through time by shocking a slug? Wait, wait, wait. Are you, did you get to hear the same way that Tesla did? Oh, heavens no, little lady. Why, his alternating current? That's old school. I did Edison's direct current. <laughs> it's also guaranteed to alleviate the grip. Okay, I don't know why you're touching me. <laughs> no! Oh, oh, come on! I did it! Oh. Ben Franklin is in the house! Oh, yeah. It's the future! Okay, no, 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 Ben Frank, don't tell me Ben Franklin electrocutes his penis, too. Oh, hey, I've done a lot of things, buddy. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. Mr. Franklin, how is it you achieve time travel without the use of electric dynamos? Uh, you heard about the kite, right? Oh, yes. Oh. Did you know I tied it to my wagus? <laughs> oh. Genius! Okay. That was it for you, Ben. Awesome. <laughs> Awesome. It was like having 20 fine French whores working at the same time. Okay, we're done. Oh, we're done. 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 We're Oh, oh, this is oh, this is um, well, this is a power strip. You can plug in a bunch of uh, yeah. electronics all at once, right into the. You know, you could stick six penises in there all at once. That's not really what we use it for. Okay, you, like, you should join us. Come oh, travel. Oh, no, 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 hold on, hold on. Join you guys. I, I want to time travel too. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss. You have to have a man key for this long. <laughs> Kevin, you must join us. We have crafted a time hood special for you. They, they made you a key. Hey, if you can't beat them. Join him. Hey, 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 okay. Yeah.
Oh, no later. touching, Tesla. Uh, okay, here we go. One, two, three, time travel! We've got a magic shark pad from Apple and the 3D TV from Sony up next. Two two. It's a double dose. Two gadgetrons in one. Surprise! 3D may be the future, but Chris Hardwick is now! Yes, the future is now! Sony televisions are some of the best on the market, and now they're out to prove that they can be the best at 3D with the Bravia HX909 series. Watch everything in 3D, including normal 2D content, with an unprecedented infinite dynamic contrast ratio. There's even 240 hertz smooth motion, Bravia internet video, and dynamic LED backlighting. So, get the ultimate viewing experience for 3600 bucks. Sony's new monolithic design, as they're mm -hmm. calling it, uh, it makes this one of the sleekest we've seen. This is just under three inches thick. Uh, some inputs are on the back, some are on the sides. You have two HDMIs there. So depending upon your, your system setup, you may or may not need to drill giant holes in your wall to mount this thing. But the monolith design also gives it a uniform feel. Are you a fan of it, though, Chris? I gotta say, I think this design is so sexy, it's gonna make the tinfoil that much easier to put on. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> I'm gonna be, I would nice. be at the signing of the Declaration of Independence in no time. <laughs> I think it's great. I like that it just kind of blends. You can't really see where the borders of the TV are. Right. It just, it's just one, you know, like, the more I think we can simplify uh, the looks of our, mm. uh, the aesthetics of our technology, You don't want exhaust ports and neons and trailing LEDs <laughs> and things <laughs> like see, that. You'd and... think that, but no, actually, no. I, think it, I think it looks really cool all this right. way. Well, not only is this TV 3D, it has, of course, all the streaming Bravia content. Um, how well do these work? Have they gotten better? Are they pretty much the same? I, you know what? They're actually pretty solid. Uh, Sony's 3D is good. It is not the best that we have ever seen. Um, the ghosting of a second image or crosstalk, you know it's not a good thing when they actually have a term for it. Right. And, and we have a problem just, that happens yeah. so much, we need to give it a name. Uh, <laughs> bad, bad 3D is stupid. Let's call it crosstalk. Yeah, that exactly. sounds like a, like a thing. Uh, it's visible some of the time, and the glasses flicker just enough to annoy you. But again, it's not all the time, but it will happen sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's not better than Panasonic's 3D. It is definitely more watchable than Samsung, so it's kind of sandwiched right in the middle of those two. Uh, the Bravia internet content is always something we really like, mainly just because there's so much of it. Right. The interface is also, again, really, really easy to use. Uh, oh, but wait! And also you have the up conversion of normal 2D to 3D. Right. Um, so the notion is that you can watch practically anything in 3D. Are you actually going to want to do that, though? Because I imagine it's headache it's not, it's not amazing. It's, yeah. it's, not, it's not amazing. Um, it, it's interesting. Not necessarily something that you would want to watch for long periods of time. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, you might want to show yeah. off that you can do it. Right. And then when people are like, that's awesome, and you're like, but don't ever ask about it again! <laughs> uh, you'd never try to watch everything with 3D uh, up conversion. Right. So somehow the dynamic contrast ratio is not 5 million or 6 or 7 million to 1. They're calling it infinite. Yeah. Infinite to 1? I don't know, but does it... Yeah. Uh, we really lost the ability to tell, I think, after four million. <laughs> they, but... might, they might as well say double infinite. That's yeah, yeah, exactly. really matters. Uh, so here we are. It's double infinite. Does that mean it's amazing? By the way, we'll never look back at this video and think that this was silly. Oh, so, someday in the future? Well, yeah, someday in the future we'll never look back at this show, let alone this concept, yeah. and wearing these glasses and go, what were they thinking? It definitely, it definitely no. feels like some 40s newsreel, like, the future is right, now. Exactly. Like, it's <laughs> these big, they're heavy, too. Yeah. They're heavy. They're heavy, and they're they heavy, pinch your head. And they clamp onto your temples like a Device, and then right. after, you know, like you're gonna see part of the 3D movement is a bunch of people are gonna have raccoon eyes because right. these things are gonna create indentations in the face. We're gonna modify our species. We're gonna modify our species um, a little bit. Um, but anyway, but with that said, the picture is amazing, right? It is. It is. It is really great. Uh, this has some of the smoothest picture quality that we've seen. There's meaning there's fast moving scenes that look incredible because of the details that you can pick out. Blacks are incredibly deep. Colors are super vivid and accurate. Um, one complaint though, there's a little bit of washout from the LED backlight in, in some of the darker scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that. It is practically perfect. Infinitely perfect. It's Someone infinitely say, perfect. Uh, it's pricey. 
3600 bucks yep. for a 52 inch HD TV right. at that price, even right. with the, the fancy eyewear, which I think is bundled free for the next two days, and then you have to pay for it after that. There's oh, like that a promotion seems, going on. That but, seems reasonable. Yeah, totally. With all that said, <laughs> what are we giving it? And, and by the way, this is again, if you get like two and then a third guy comes over, you're like, you're SOL, buddy. Yeah. You're not watching. You're not, you're I not hope ready. you like blurry television because that's <laughs> what you're going to get. Uh, but even with all that said, I'm still going to give it a four out of five. I mean, yes, it's expensive. The 3D isn't amazing yet. I think that just speaks more to where we are with 3D, with 3D as a in technology. General. Yeah. Uh, still one of the best televisions that we have watched. I would have, oh, oh! Well, guys, what's going on? Sound, well, you know what that sound means. No, I've never heard that before. Okay. So you what, don't know what that sound what means. What is it, Kevin? It's time for bonus prawn! 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 I'm on some kind of Latino game show or right, something. So there's no, no, no foam B is going to yeah, come out from no, behind the watch out wall. Right uh, Apple's Magic Trackpad came out on Tuesday. Yep. Uh, it's basically a giant version of the uh, wireless version of uh, the MacBook Pro's touchpad. Yep. Intended use, though, is for desktops. Right. And we wanted to talk about it because people are asking about it. So uh, how easy is it? Let's start with setup to get it going. It's pretty easy to set up. I mean, it runs on Mac OS X Snow Leopard and the latest software update. Uh, trackpad connects to your Mac via Bluetooth, and then uh, that's pretty much ready to go. Mm -hmm. The entire service is one button if you have have a MacBook Pro, you know exactly what that means. You can use the multi-touch uh, to swipe features and do things like scroll, uh, pinch and zoom, switch applications. That's can I click and drag? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, it's not amazing. <laughs> uh, I'm actually surprised. I wish they had put this, they, they had just sold a Bluetooth keyboard that had this that on, well, on yeah. the end of it. This just as a piece. You right. know. Well, how does it work compared to using a mouse, though? It's pretty responsive. It works great for, for web browsing. I mean, use two fingers on the trackpad to scroll on both axes. Uh, you can also pinch and zoom by splitting your fingers. You can swipe three fingers, which allows you to move back and forth across pages, forward and, forward and backwards. All right, so traditional stuff there. I mean, that yeah. it sounds like for navigating the web, perfect fit. You know, maybe for a media center PC, great. What about something like iMovie? or Final Cut actually editing something. It really takes a lot of getting used to to use that. I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't just use a regular mouse. You know, you got to click and drag clips. You have to keep one finger down while you drag the other. You can yeah. scrub through footage by using two fingers, which is cool, but it's still just not as easy as using a mouse. Right. And also, the tapping response... There's just a little you really bit have of a, to go. Yeah, you a really. Delay. I mean, you you probably would get used to it, but right. Mm. And then of course, eh, gaming. I mean, if you no. I don't know why a sane person would do that. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> wait, wait do, you, do you mean game on a Mac or <laughs> well, use that, the trackpad? That and then on top of that, then put another like Harrison Burger on metal jacket on to keep <laughs> you from being able. To, I mean, it, it's okay, but for first person shooters, you know, like uh, like Team Fortress Two, I mean, you're just never no. gonna get the same right, so response. So don't game with so, it. Don't game. I don't know why it. you would use that. Uh, as a gaming mouse, I mean, you really have to be some kind of sadist and practice a lot to make it work for gaming. So you're better off time traveling with your penis. You can time you travel. With your, yeah, exactly. Playing games. I mean, it's, it's interesting that they're doing this. I mean, like a mouse technology hasn't really changed much since mice were invented. Right. Um, but but again, I think it's I'm, better for. I'm more conspiracy theorist with this. Like, yeah. I, I like to think that they're they're building this and trying to get this out there so that they can convince developers to make multi-touch applications. Right. And then try to switch the desktop side of things over to an iOS 4 style I, interface I, I, and then I offer a touch screen iMac. Mac I would definitely well. agree with that. They're yeah. trying to pull everything over and well, change and change all that so they can patent stuff. So they can lock it all down. They can lock it all down and bring it into the walled garden. But uh, sixty-nine bucks. Yeah. The Apple Magic Mouse. What are we rating it? Um, I'm only going to give it a three out of five. A three out of five. I think it's okay for just general browsing. It's got a simplistic and cool design, easy to set up and use. It's just not so much for some of the more sophisticated applications, right. Photoshop, iMovie, anything like that. It's wireless, so you could use it for a media center. Um, if you're a trackpad kind of person or a Mac fanboy or you have carpal tunnel syndrome, then then get it. I guess. <laughs> All right, that's three yeah. good reasons. There yeah, we go. There you go. Chris Hardwick, thank Kevin you, sir. Kevin Pereira, nice oh, to see pleasure. you. Thank you, everybody. Get it out. Still ahead. We'll do spring break, stripper pulls, man-eating fish, and questionable offers from strange men have in common. British actress Kelly Brook. Yes. She's stopping by to give us the lowdown on Piranha 3D and a whole lot more. And later we have Street Fighter inspired Nikes on Sniggerheads. Hadouken! Entertainment. Um, they they normally come to myself or Weston Scott. Yeah, I don't answer the phone when they call me. No. But Weston was out of town, so we sent Allison to ride a motocross bike with an X Games gold medalist. And the fact that you're still standing here tells me that you probably survived, right? Mostly. Okay. What does it take to pull? 
off a backflip with a 250 pound bike 40 feet above the air, probably a complete disregard for human safety. But when it comes to motocross, nobody pushes the metal quite like Brian Deegan. Pioneers of freestyle motocross, Daredevil Brian Deegan has more than a dozen X Game wins and he's looking to smoke this year's competition. We caught up with him at his compound outside Los Angeles to see how the training is going. Okay, so Brian, you're you're kind of the Michael Jordan of this sport. Can we start from the beginning and learn how you made this great career? I grew up in Nebraska, I raced dirt bikes ever since I was a little kid. When I graduated high school, I told my parents, give me one year, grabbed a credit card, old pickup truck, pinned it to Cali started freestyle motocross with my buddies and it just took off. We put a name on our group, Metal Militia, we just thought that sounded cool and we were just known as the rebel dudes of dirt bike. That's before there was foam pits, you know, doing the first 360, doing certain things that were like such a risky, risky move that was like throwing all or nothing down and that's how we built the name. This is a Honda CR250 two-stroke. This is a bike that we use in the foam pit. You can see right here, it's got handlebars that spin around. So if you want to do a decade air, which is spin around the front of the bike, you can hook up a computer to this bike and change the power bands and stuff. So they're actually pretty cool. It's a tech bike. It's super tech. Made these to basically when you flip the bike out, it catches your arms so you don't go flying all the way over the front of the bike. I mean, we're still inventing stuff every day for freestyle, and I think it's just a sport that's gonna keep growing. So this is uh, my race truck. It's basically mimicking a Ford, but everything about it is custom made. This thing's got like 800 horsepower motors in them, and you can jump them 150 feet. I've jumped this thing and endowed and stuck it in the dirt and flipped it in over in, and you get out and you're fine. All right, I'm tired of looking at all this stuff. Can we see it in action? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so what are you going to show us today? Today I'm going to throw down some of those custom tricks on the front guard there and try to put together a little bit of a run like what I'll be doing at X Games. When you're upside down and you fully let go of the bike, how can you trust that the bike's still going to be there? You uh, just close your eyes and hope for the best. <laughs> Alright, go show us something, go! Get lining up for the ramp at 100 foot run in, hits it in second gear. Doing a big double knack Indian air. Backflip, heel clicker. One handed rock solid Indy. Superman, KOD, Indian air backflip. All right, so I've seen some pretty sweet stuff here. You think I can give it a shot? For sure, we got a bike just for you. Okay, throttle, brake, I think I got this. Uh, Brian, thanks so much. If you wanna check out Brian and his militia, watch the X Games that are just around the corner. Who knows, maybe you're gonna see me there, right? Get out the gas. This week, gaming goddess Morgan Webb dropped by to tantalize us with an ethereal game called Limbo. Trust me. Keep clapping. This game break blew my mind. Kind of creeped me out a little bit. Okay, before we get into today's game, which happens yes. to be Limbo, I want to preface the fact that Morgan's been playing StarCraft II since Monday night. Um, are you okay? I'm are you, a little, how's your, are you I have warm? to say, like, I'm a little tired, but you know, we've been drinking, we've been drinking some energy drinks. We're good, we're good to go, but after this, I am going to home because I need to finish the game because the review is due. Yeah, yes, so we'll get, we'll get to the review probably next week. Next week For right now, we have to talk about an incredible indie game. This is by Play Dead Studios. It's called Limbo. Yes. Uh, it's out for the Xbox Live, and it's an eerie sort of puzzle-solving platformer that has a visual look that I mean, some are going to get bored by, others are going to appreciate the, the, the depth and the style that they've achieved with just shades of gray. It is jarring when you first play it because you're, you're sort of expecting more to come. And, yeah. and this, is, this is what the game is definitely going to look like. Mm -hmm. um, it's the monochromatic black and white. There's no music. Um, right now, you're, you're wrapped up in a spider yeah, cocoon. Yeah, the spider got you in the cocoon. Spoiler! Away. Oh, we should also mention this is a giant spoiler. 
Uh, we no, won't... this stuff all happens. In no, the this stuff all happens like in the trial earlier on. In the but, first five minutes, yeah, yeah. But be careful because you you should try it. So the yes. controls I think are interesting because uh, some games you level up, you get button combos, you get weapons, you can power up your character. Yeah, you can't really do any of that. I mean, you jump can... and grab. And you can't jump very high. Either. No, you're not a very good jumper. That's all you got. But but are we good jumpers? Like I can't jump that high. No. I can't jump a huge gap. I have interns lift me. I refuse to bend at the knees. Someone's bragging. Yeah, no, it's just the way it is around here. Deal. Yeah. Um, but what's interesting is that is that even with them not changing the mechanics and saying, okay, it's it's grab and jump, yes. the puzzles and the and the worlds themselves evolve in a way that make you feel like you're doing new things as this character. Well, you really are. I mean, because there's a lot of sort of there's like these, you know, you can change the gravity. There's gears and cogs and electric floors, and there's a lot of obstacles that mm. you're going to deal with, and you're going to deal with them and really. For example, you can't touch the um, electrified H right there. Bad things yeah. happen to you. The sparking, shiny things. Stay away from those. That's bad. Uh, um, the other thing is, you you die a lot in this game. Yeah, and it's... Because you're just walking along, la, 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 I'm a little kid. And then a giant bear trap snaps you, and you're like, okay, note to self, watch out for giant bear traps on the ground. Right. And moving on. Yeah, and, and moving it's, on. And it's, it's jarring and violent, but I think that adds to it, because your character seems so delicate. You right. don't want to hurt this fragile little child that you're controlling. And I guess that brings me to my next question, which is, what the hell is the plot or the point? I beat this game, and I still have no idea I mean, who I am or where I am. And some people like that, but... It's one of those sort of existential experiences where I think you're just supposed to enjoy the way it looks. There's no music. You drag dead bodies around. You jump <laughs> on dead bodies in the water. A spider yeah. comes and, you know, jams Worms it. Worms burrow into your head as well. It's, re it's not for children. Do we have the, I think we have the spider part, actually, because, of course, the, the puzzles in the game are creative, and we don't want to spoil any of this stuff for you. This right. happens very early on in the game, but you get to this thing, and you're like, okay, what is that? Okay, clearly it's something trying to stab my precious little face. And it will stab your precious... I mean, it's really, it's really a burly special experience. Yeah. I would not play it with children around. But no. I just... Or play it with children and teach them a lesson. Don't mess with... Spiders. Yeah, spiders, adults, pretty much anything in this world. I mean, a lot of Shut comparisons. Shut up and eat your animal crackers. <laughs> a lot of comparisons um, to this game have been made to this game to Braid. Yeah. Um, in the way that it's sort of very stylized. Personally, I think Braid's a little bit more nuanced, mm -hmm. and I think offers like a little bit more in the way of story. Um, but this is definitely a worthwhile experience. How long do you think it took you probably to finish I, it? I probably beat it about four hours, went back and played yeah. a couple sequences again just to try different things. I mean, it's very, there, there is a solution for each puzzle, but it's still Correct. interesting. Uh, I don't know how much that harms replay value. I don't see myself going back to play it again all that much. I don't see myself going back to play it again either. There is one of the achievements. You get like 10 points for going and playing the game and only dying five yeah. times. In one sitting. Forget it. Yeah. So about four for, to five hours, I think, for a, a forget about it. A solid Actually, gamer. I would say probably four to five hours is, okay. is what it took. Twelve hundred fun bucks, uh, which is fifteen real world dollars. I feel like it's a little bit much, but I really enjoyed the experience. I had a great time with that. It's fifteen dollars well spent. <laughs> you got to see that it's, kind of thing. And it's awesomely violent. It's, um, what, oh, oh, God. oh, all right, all right, all right. I know. <laughs> what is X play? No. Okay. <laughs> what you're did gonna I die. Get? You're going to die a lot. It's you are going to die is. a lot. What did you guys give this five game? Five out of five? Yeah. yeah. Five out of five for 15 bucks. Is, it, that's pretty good. Actually. It's a good trade-off. Uh, yeah. Limbo is available on Xbox Live again. And once Morgan's finished with her review, we will be talking StarCraft 2 next week. I'm working on it. I'm working week. on it. You're a trooper. You're a trooper for playing hours and hours of video games for us. Thank you, Morgan. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are your shoes boring? I love... Maybe my shoes are boring, Allison. Why do you ask? Well, Why? I ask because this edition of Sneakerheads will liven up your feet. School is around the corner, which means it's time to start upgrading your wardrobe. And what better way than buying some new kicks? We all remember waiting in line at the arcade for Street Fighter 2. Well, it looks like we'll be doing more of the same with the Nike SB's Street Fighter Pack. Inspired by Capcom's Ryu and Chun-Li, these skateboarding dunks are an homage to the two street fighting badasses. Ryu's kicks, and no, not his tornado kick, are a black and white mid-dunk to match his look, and then topped off with a red tatter Nike swoosh to duplicate his trademark headband. As for the thigh-tastic Chun-Li, her low SBs are blue suede complemented with white highlights and accented by gold trim. While the price has yet to be announced, the Street Fighter pack is expected to drop around this holiday season. And no word yet on when Zangief will get his pair. What do you get when you combine Dr. Seuss with sneakers? You get one pair, two pairs, 
orange pears, and blue pears. That's right, Converse is rolling out a Dr. Seuss collection of Chuck Taylors as part of their new fall line. Taking a cue from the childhood classics, Converse has created four adult-sized all-stars to add to your sneaker collection. There's two pairs for the cat in the hat, one for his sidekicks, the things one and two, and one pair for the book, If I Ran the Zoo. Available over at Converse.com, these Seuss-inspired sneakers can be picked up for about 60 bucks a pop. Now, if you've always thought Velcro was too technical, then maybe it's time to head back to the future. The guys over at Instructables.com have taken a page from Back to the Future 2 and come up with a way to mod out your kicks with power laces. With nothing more than a motor, batteries, and a few hardware store items, and of course, a pair of high tops, they give you a step-by-step -step breakdown on how to turn your shoes into a pair of self-tying Marty McFlies. So if the thought of never tying your shoes again sounds like three shades of awesome, head on over to Instructables.com to build your own power laces. Sadly, there are still no instructions on how to create a damn hoverboard. So whether it's Seuss, Street Fighter, or just souping up your own shoes, we've got what you sneakerheads need for starting off the school year right. You win. Stay tuned. It's a super hot lady versus Manny new fish in just a moment. Yes. Kelly Bug 3D Haranas. Haranas. And a stripper pole. Ooh. I shouldn't have to say more. How do you say that in a Spanish accent? A stripper pole. A stripper pole. Attack of the Show is presented by Sprint. What can you do with 4G? Do you like killer fish that eat people's faces? Do you like beautiful women who tell body stories of spring break shenanigans? Yes! If you answered either question in the affirmative, they did. Like our audience, have we got an interview for you? All right, my next guest stars in Piranha 3D, and she's actually not a flesh eating fish, as, as far as I can see. Ladies and gentlemen, please <laughs> welcome Miss Kelly Brooke! Yay! How are you? I'm very good, thank you. I'm glad you. I'm glad you threw on your, 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 your casual Friday attire to be here. Well, I didn't know what to wear, and so I said, Well, well they told you, know, you to dress casual. They said casual. Oh and I was like, well, like, jeans, I don't do casual. So, <laughs> like, you know, I just pulled out this old thing. I would wear this to clean around the house or wash the car or Listen, to a red carpet. Yeah, I mean, it's hurt. casual. It doesn't hurt to make an effort. No, you, and, and, and it shows you look gorgeous. So <laughs> thank, thank you for you. coming I'm on. Making, thank um, you. Thank you. And you made... I'm being very respectful, and I'm making most of this amazing opportunity but, to come on your show. So there you go. Oh, that's, now, now you're just lying. We know, <laughs> yeah, no. we know what kind of opportunity this is. But thank you, nonetheless. I it, didn't I? Uh, no, no, it was really good. And and you you did an amazing opportunity at Comic-Con because the fans were crazy for your film. And it's like... Oh, it's so... I mean, it was my first experience of Comic-Con. I'd never been there before. Well, I'm sorry. And now that, <laughs> now that the shock is over, how are you recovering? Well, I felt a bit out of place because I didn't have any, like, spandex to wear and everyone was kind of walking around as Wonder Woman and all <laughs> right. these crazy... You know, it seems like the larger you were, the more tight the, your outfit had to yeah. be. It just seems like... Is that kind of what they... It's, uh, yeah, it's like Newton's law, the moose knuckle. Um, it happens at Comic-Con, yeah. Um, but easy. But no, I mean, I have to say, like, I didn't meet any crazy fans. Everyone just seemed really lovely and actually just really passionate about movies. And I didn't know what to expect because those things can get a little bit crazy. Sure. But everyone seemed to, like, love our film, Piranha 3D. And yay. just, yeah, so it was like, yeah. you know, to me, it's like my first kind of Hollywood film and then for it to be a genre film and then to have that fan base kind of supporting it. It's oh, just sure. been amazing. Sure. So and to you... meet them one-on-one, -on -one, it was actually quite cool. Well, that's great. And, and let's, let's talk about Piranha 3D because I hear Piranha 3D and I'm immediately scared. I, well, it, it is based I, on a true story, I, so you should be. Well, good, yeah. <laughs> we'll get to the story. Um, I don't get the 3D thing. That scares me. So there's going to be piranhas, and they're going to be coming out of the screen into my face. Is that, <laughs> in your face. Is that a safe assumption when I hear the term piranha 3D? Uh, there's, yeah, there's a few piranhas. There's a few gorgeous girls in bikinis that are going to be coming out into your face as oh, well. Okay. Yes, yeah, so there's lots of that. All right, I'm all right um, with that. Lots so this, this must be based on a true story. It's Whenever gorgeous women run into a, a lake filled with piranhas, the first thing they do is put their breasts in my face. Um, what, what is the backstory here with these crazy 3D piranhae? Um, well, there is an earthquake. 
in Lake Havasu. Right. And, um, so far, so believable. And um, <laughs> prehistoric piranhas get released into the lake during spring break and um, ruin the party, unfortunately. Okay, still believable. I'm on track, yeah. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm totally on track. So I play the character of Danny, and she is, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with these Girls Gone Wild videos. I don't know if Fam you... No, actually, no, 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 mother. I don't oh, know how they arrived anyway, under my bed. They're, they're these horrendous, horrible videos with girls <laughs> that, you know, lift their tops up, and, you know, you don't want to know about it. But anyway, I play one of those girls. <laughs> so, yeah. By the way, and impossible <laughs> to cancel the subscription. That's how they get you. You get in, the phone line to cancel is only one hour a week. I'm just... For food for thought. Um, yes. Did you shoot? You shot where? You shot in during Arizona. A, in Arizona. During an actual spring break or no? No, but it was Labor Day weekend while we were there, and I saw all the cast members like packing up and leaving town for the mm -hmm. weekend, and I was like, hang on, isn't this like? Isn't this party weekend? Why is everyone going? Right. Being from England, I'd never experienced spring break or Labor Memorial weekend. I, I didn't know what that was, so mm. I decided to kind of stay around and just see for myself what it was all yeah. about. Lots of oh LA looks, hair gel, and <laughs> orange so cans. I got friendly and... with some crew members because they were kind of down with it, and I said, "Look, you know what's going on this weekend?" They said, "Just don't worry, come out with us on the boat." So they picked me up in this boat. I've never seen anything like it. This boat had speakers. <laughs> like Puff Daddy would have been impressed. It was like. <laughs> I was like, you kid, this is like a floating boombox. What is going on? <laughs> there was a stripper pole. And I just I had my eye on that. I was like, what? And uh, yeah, we had barbecues on the boat. Like the girls on the boat, a couple of them had just got out of jail, you know. So we had lo lots of talk. They had lots the of stories. What the and, hell um, kind of crew were you working with on I Piranha was, 3D? I, I was with the... I was but with we the, got some ex-cons, some speakers, and a stripper pole. You want to have a weekend or what? <laughs> Let's go. Listen, I surrendered. I just embraced it. I just went for it. And at I had the point, best weekend of my life. At what point did the piranhas attack though? <laughs> we didn't have any piranhas. No, pro okay, then you're lucky. And then, and then you, it, actually, it's an interesting story about how you got into the film. This was years and years and years of you auditioning, going on callback after oh, callback, yeah. and it yeah. was finally whittled down for you to be in Piranha 3D. Is that the, did I hear well, the story correctly? Well, yeah, I'd kind of, I'd, I'd spent a lot of time in LA in my early 20s um, and, uh, and worked on some TV shows like Smallville and whatnot. And then, you know, went back to England and I was living in England and uh, came to LA on a holiday with my girlfriend. Just, just hanging out? Just hanging out, catching up with some friends, you know, wasn't really pursuing anything. And um, Alexander Ajar, the director of Piranha, was in the same restaurant and came over to me and said, I am uh, making this movie. I think you would be perfect as one of the girls in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> He's French. He's French. And I thought, oh, yeah, all right, whatever. And and, um, and it turns out it was a legitimate movie. And, and here you are. And you have here the... I am, yeah. So it's That's like, normally how you yeah. end up in a windowless van. Uh, <laughs> it could have gone either on way. On the internet in America. It gone so way. you, I would say you lucked out, but you have worked so hard for it, and it's such a pleasure <laughs> to you. see you. Thank you for coming. Still ahead, an epic fail of ours becomes an AOTS classic. See you, Olivia. Take one for the team. Like <laughs> Coming up Monday on an all-new Attack of the Show, Warren the Ape joins us to talk about life after rehab and starring in his own TV show. Then we'll show you a 5.1 home theater system that will make your living room feel like the Cineplex. So find out if it's worth 400 bucks on Gadgetron. And Blair Herder goes on a nude bike ride. And if you think a city full of naked cyclists is not safe for work, wait until you see a nude man Blair. See it Monday. December of 2007. Ah, I remember that. It was our 82nd show taping that month. Yes. And it was Olivia's turn to embarrass herself by singing into a TV camera. Uh, and she did a phenomenal job of impersonating Tina C in Around the Net. Number two today is a YouTube singing sensation. She is known simply as Tina. Mm. Yes, Tina has been posting videos of herself on YouTube for almost a year now. Mm -hmm. But over the past few months, she started doing bedroom karaoke versions of her favorite pop songs. <laughs> so here for your guaranteed pleasure, <laughs> even our jaded audience, is her latest holiday song. Hello, wonderful people. I wanted to tell you that, yes, I am back. And I'm going to do a Christmas one. I'm going to sing. I heard Santa on the radio. I just listened to the on the radio. This is not the music, well, the sounds I should. And radio never sounded so good. Oh. No, don't, don't.
cheer it. Don't cheer it. This is another one of those people that thinks that, oh, I'm going to upload myself to YouTube. I'm going to be the next internet superstar. I'm going to be such a big deal. Like, you know, I, Carson's going to sign me. I, lo I love that people are able to get their creative expressions out there and actually share it with the oh, whole world. You don't, cool. you don't really believe that. Yes, you I, don't really believe yes, that. Yes, I do believe it. I think that like work like this will be remembered just like I don't know if you remember the early graffiti of Sane Smith, who is now considered an artist. It's you don't the even same remember that. You're just, no, you're just you're just saying that because you know that one of these days this video is going to get out there. Hey everybody, here's my Christmas song. Big ups to baby Jesus. Silent night, holy night. producers ask me to do things and I say yes, I later regret them. Okay, okay, it's time for an epic fail. Another one. Another okay. one. Today's fail involves the exciting practice of cliff diving. And for the record, you're supposed to aim for the water, not the cliff. Epic fail. <laughs> oh, man. And his friends aren't phased at all. Oh, nope. oh Jim's face came off. No, yeah, well. Oops, man. We gotta, we gotta fail the friends and fail his face. Just fail it all while we're at it. Lost my face. Oh. What if we could actually face? What was that face off? Was yeah, that yeah. we'd be John Travolta and uh, what was the other guy? Nick Cage. Nick Cage. The other guy. Yeah. That other guy. Yeah. Oh, the other hair plug dude. <laughs> oh. Who would you trade faces with? Uh, I would take Travolta's face. I'd actually take it. I think because that's a good I choice. saw Nick Cage at Comic Con. <laughs> <laughs> no. Go to g4tv.com/aots for all the things you saw today and more. I thought he was dressed as Ghost Rider. No. He just is Ghost Rider. Just Nick Cage. Stick around, it's Evan Science is going to start right now, by the way. Um, Nick Cage isn't coming on anytime soon, is he? Was his hair on fire when you saw him? It looked like it was. It was orange. No.